Get ready! You're tuned in to Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T, bringing you the hottest trending topics on social media. Stay connected. Instagram.com slash Lovely Tea 2002. Hey, you guys. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T. Hey, Tea Sippers. Thank y'all for tuning in to another episode. So I got my boy back with me here, Tiny. He's been MIA. I know y'all been asking for him, honey. I don't drug him out the woodwork. Say what's up to the people, Tiny. Hello, everybody. All right. So you guys know that Tiny is a huge fan of the Joe Budden podcast. He's the one who really kind of put me up on it because I never watched it. I never paid attention to it. I didn't really know much about his podcast until he left Complex and he left Everyday Struggle with DJ Academics. So when that drama went on, then he went back to his podcast. So that's when I kind of slowly learned about it. But Tiny's been a big fan of the show for years. So he's been keeping me abreast with all this drama that's been going on for like the past few months. So yesterday it went down. So if y'all don't know, Mal took to Twitter and he basically said, I've been cool and quiet for too long. I'm allowed to get out of character for at least an hour, maybe 40 minutes. The truth is usually short and simple. So he posted that. And then about an hour or so later, him and Rory went live and they did a whole little podcast segment and we got the chance to watch it. So this is what we're going to talk about tonight on Tea Time Unfiltered. So, Tiny, how did you feel when you first heard that they were going to respond? And how did you feel when you, you know, watching everything play out? I was excited. I was looking forward to hearing what they had to say in response because Joe up to this point has said a lot. So mm-hmm. I just thought that it would be interesting to hear their take on everything. We all know there's uh, three sides to a story, his side, their side and the truth. Facts. And what was so interesting about this, because it was it was different to see them out of their element, but they were saying a lot of truth because it seemed like for so long, Joe was painting a narrative kind of like they were ungrateful. They were workers. Then we find out that they were getting a percentage of the podcast. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because this is something that was brought up by academics by Charlemagne by a bunch of other naysayers good bad and indifferent and everybody was like y'all there's little hints that have been thrown over the years like are y'all really seeing how this is going down are y'all really like up on y'all's business with y'all's contract looking like so it was always something that was it was always an undercurrent but it seemed like as long as everything was going good we're making money we're rolling nobody really cared Right. And I think the problem, too, is when people go into things, you know, what I'm saying as friends, I think they all went into it like, OK, we want to help him get the show off the ground. Because remember, when everything first really went down, um, it happened after the whole complex situation. Mm-hmm. So DJ Academics had been doing his thing. Complex was not even at a million subscribers. So when he went over there, he bought his so-called chat niggas. So Mm -hmm. they were the bulk of the audience over that complex. Nobody was really fanboying over Joe like that. You know, he was like the angry uncle snapping Mm -hmm. on the Migos and little Yachty. So he he knew how to create viral moments. So Mm -hmm. I think that's what really helped him. He was able to rebrand himself because of DJ Academics and Complex. And then he left them just high and dry. And he claimed it was because of bad contracts and, you know, how the industry is trying to play him. So it's very funny that we fast forward almost three years later. And now he's being accused of being industry and not practicing what he's been preaching. It's actually because of, according from his own mouth, it's because of what was going to happen with Complex. Complex had made a deal or was acquired by Verizon. Mm -hmm. And during that acquisition, Joe found out by poking around and asking questions that they were being paid for certain things. Complex was and Joe was like, how come we're not seeing any of this money? Like, where's it going to? It's Mm -hmm. ironic because these are the same issues that Rory were bringing up with him. If we do, if we're bringing this to the table, how come we're not benefiting from it? Right. Cause they even made a point where they said that, 
they could sell out uh, like not a whole arena, but let's say like a little stadium or whatever, or they sell tickets, 2,500 tickets for a show, another show, they might sell 3000 tickets. And when they first started, they might've been selling 1500. They were getting paid the same regardless. Exactly. So that right there was causing some alarms. And I just think it's really sad because Joe knows how it is to be shitted on by the industry and to get played. And I believe that his ego, he's very narcissistic to me, in my personal opinion, his ego definitely got the best of him. It started to become, and even when you would send me clips, especially with the whole Spotify situation, it was always I, me, myself. It was never we. And remember, I would always ask you, aren't, isn't this like a podcast? Aren't all three of them together in this? Because the way he talks, it's just Joe. It's the hypocrisy of it all. Even the fact that on his podcast, one of the things they always talked about was his music career, how he's been ripped off his whole career, shady business dealings, other people's business, which is something that he got into it with Gilly the Kid over, discussing their business and what went down and what didn't go down. So it's very interesting that you guys end up in this situation. It's like that rapper that always raps about the industry being so shady and people really need to check their paperwork. And then we find out later that they had bad paperwork. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just very ironic and very, very interesting. And I think it's, it's dope that you pointed out that this really all started back at Complex. And his whole issue and his whole crusade was creatives versus corporate. And now he's acting very corporate. Right. And I feel like even back then he was, let's keep it real. To me, he was social climbing because mm -hmm. if you think about it, I didn't even know he had a podcast before complex, never heard of it. They said he had it with some girl and then the girl, cause she was talking, I ended up watching her interview with Adam 22 on no jumper. Mm -hmm. And she was talking about how Joe button just fired her out the blue, refused mm -hmm. to take her phone calls, respond to her text message. Never seen this girl day in my life, but I guess she had started the podcast with Joe and Rosenberg, because Hot 97 was dragging Joe Button too. Rosenberg was, I guess, instrumental in starting his podcast or planting the bug mm -hmm. and getting him the studio. So it seems like he's had a track record of using people when they can benefit him. And then once he feels like he can go on to something bigger and better, he just drops them like hotcakes. Because we didn't have a, we didn't have anything. We just had Rosenberg put us on SoundCloud and right. iTunes. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, Rosenberg is a very, I love him, but he's a very sensitive guy. So he like goes off on things. And so they had this gay ass tit for tat back and forth. So I come in one morning and Rosenberg's like, I went in on your boy on air. And I was like, cool. I literally <coughs> didn't even ask what he said because I just don't care about their stupid little beef. Like six hours later, I got a text from Joe that said, you're fired. Literally zero context. There's no, I have no idea what happened. And I wrote back, what? And then he wrote back, you are fired. Like he un took the, <laughs> the apostrophe out. And so I called him a couple times and he didn't answer. And I'm like, what the fuck? And so then the next day, Rory calls me like, yo, y'all got to talk. We got to get this sorted out. I'm like, I still don't know what the fuck happened. But to be honest with you, I don't even want to talk because there's no way, there's no mind frame that you can describe to me that makes it okay how he went about it like at all like any there's no way you could justify that even if you thought you heard i said this that or the third the fact you couldn't pick up the phone and have a conversation with me and you just he he was waiting for that he wanted i think he wanted an out it's the vibe i'm getting because when you think about it he used dj academics his fan base you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. complex to basically reinvent himself then once he thought he was bigger than the complex show then he decided to take all that because by then he had people hooked on his personality mm -hmm. you want to know what would joe say next you know what's joe going to do and so that's why he just left the show the way he did and then went ran back to his own podcast so at this point he done bought a whole new audience who was never checking for his podcast before this to his podcast so at that point academics is not there who can i use you know what i'm saying to still keep everything going and then hence that's when he brought in rory and then eventually they brought in mal yeah yep 
or Ma, Jamal, right? That's his name. Yeah, yeah. I always call him Mal because the way it's spelled. And then maybe he's like, oh, new worrying Mal. But I guess he's saying male hoodie. So, <laughs> so I feel like all he did literally was just social climb off of people. You can say, well, Joe's been famous and he was on Love and Hip Hop. Let's not act like he was a Stevie J. Even when he ended up getting, you know, when he left Love and Hip Hop, nobody cared. People moved on. <laughs> he was never like one of those main Love and Hip Hop characters. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, like even his, history. yeah, like even his storyline, nobody really cared about it one way or another, you know? And it's like, he's always had to do these reality television type stints to keep himself fresh in the public's mind. If he's not on reality TV, nobody was checking for him. So really this podcast was really a blessing because he was really able to reinvent himself. And he ended up, you know, I always give him props. He ended up having one of the most successful podcasts out here out of all of these so-called celebrities. And so to see that the paperwork was not tight, to see that his friends were basically used and, you know, kind of pushed to the wayside is really unnerving. I mean, they were saying a lot of real stuff in that. And I just hope that people really take this as a lesson. You know, that when you go into business, you need to understand there's a big difference between friendship and business. And it seemed like from day one, he was acting funny anytime it came to money talks, contracts and i think that should have been a red flag to um at least to rory we should just have that conversation anyways because we're starting to get real offers not just little ads here and there like right fifteen hundred dollars twenty five hundred dollars right like, we're getting actual offers are they mm -hmm. crazy offers no but they're offers so we should just do this because we're all friends let's just get a, a binding contract between all of us right nothing crazy nothing to a specific deal right nothing to a lump sum of money just a percentage based shit let's just do that mm-hmm Call Joe, and I say that to him. This was one of the first conversations I'd ever really been offended to Joe, and I've expressed this to him. He flipped the fuck out, called me insecure for wanting to have a contract, hmm. and said, don't call me about this shit. <laughs> I said, I'm insecure because I think we're all friends, and I want to have a, a contract since all these deals are coming in. So once right. the deals are finalized, the three of us don't have to say a fucking word to each other. We good. Right. We can continue on with this chemistry of this podcast. Right. But I'm insecure. Mm -hmm. With some people, like especially for guys, uh, if it's something that involves their girl or girls, that's their that's their weak spot. Or some people, it might be something else. With a lot of people, it's money. Somebody will be so cool, they'll be ride or die, they'll be loyal. They'll this person will jump in front of a bullet for you. But mm -hmm. then you bring something in, and that's that X factor. For him, it's money. Yeah. And I think also, too, think about it like this. He was a washed up rapper that most people had been dismissed. The only song I remember from Joe Budden was Pump It Up. <laughs> so this really revived him. So it's almost like, think about it like back in high school, right? Mm -hmm. If you were like the ugly duckling. And now fast forward five years later, you're that girl. You're that guy. You're the shit. Mm -hmm. That can really stroke somebody's ego. So now it's almost like, yeah, industry, y'all used to shit on me and tell me I was irrelevant. Now I'm telling the people, I'm shifting the culture and I'm letting people know who's irrelevant in the industry as far as music and mm -hmm. hip hop and culture and R&B and things like that. So now he's really a force to be reckoned with. And I think that really went to his head. Definitely. It's, I mean, even just being a rapper from the beginning, most rappers have huge egos to begin with. Mm -hmm. So then to become, to go into another lane and find success in that lane, and a lot of that success, let's be real, was found on talking about other people, talking about other rappers, mm -hmm. and, and to build off of that. I think, let's just be real, what people really respected about Joe Budden or respect about him is his ability to get a check. He had the thing with Complex. The complex is like you said, what really blew him up when he snapped on little Yachty. That got him a lot of attention. Well, just asking, yeah, well, you don't you sound like see. you very aware but what with what's it? going on, and you one of the hottest niggas on earth. But what do you want me to say? You want me to say, I want uh, you to uh, be uh, aware uh. of your business. I want you to know whether you're in a 360 or not. I want you to appreciate the culture that changed your life uh. and took you from college dorm rooms eating fucking oodles and noodles. I want you who's well spoken and articulates himself well. My nigga. Chill. People started tuning in. They wanted to hear his rants. They wanted to see what he was talking about. 
Mm -hmm. He simultaneously ended up on Love and Hip Hop because he's always had this reputation in his history of dating some of the baddest chicks that were in hip hop. He used to mess with Esther Baxter. He was with, of course, Tahiri. So that then people start seeing that, you know, you're rubbing elbows with Hitmaker. You're, you're doing this. You have all this inside industry knowledge. So people are gravitating towards you because of that. Then we next, we know, you do this deal with Revolt. All oh, this is a good look. And I think people just respect that. We respect people even if we don't like them when they're making moves. And you right. see them working. We can see your come up. Everybody likes it. I say that with everybody. It's always beautiful to see somebody on their come up. Mm -hmm. Once they come up, though, shit switches. And I can give you a million examples of that. Off the top of my head, DJ Khaled comes to mind. When DJ Khaled was first putting out those albums, they were the shit. Everybody was rocking with Khaled. He was breaking all these new artists. He was working with all these big names, putting people together on songs you never thought you would see. Once it became complacent, we ended up where we're at now. You know what I'm saying? Right. Khaled Remember still, even Khaled. wasn't that like a year ago or two years ago when he was going off on um, the group from Odd Future? Mm -hmm. Like he was mad. Yeah, he was mad at Tyler the Creator because he ended up being nominated and winning a Grammy. And it's like, how dare you even compare yourself to an artist? Like, you're literally getting all <laughs> these artists together and putting them on your mixtape. Two totally different things. But and that's how arrogant and comfortable he got. Arrogant and comfortable. So when what you've been doing that's been working stops working because we're used to it, you don't know what to do. And I think that's what's happening with Joe, too. You've done something for so long. And then you started to switch up and you started to kind of rest on your laurels. And then the show started to take a nosedive. I thought all of this was a publicity stunt. It was a rollout. It was a good way to get people's attention. To find out that it was real was kind of disappointing as a fan of the podcast because. Yo, what's up? Hey, tea sippers. To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.